Well, we just got the latest news from the Bank of Canada, the organization that makes the biggest financial decisions for the country, and if I'm honest, their latest comments seem a little bit embarrassing for them. And the reason I say that is because for the very first time, they're admitting that they're confused about one of the most important aspects of their jobs, and that confusion could have a big impact for average Canadians. I don't know, it seems like they're intentionally ignoring a huge detail, but let's get into it. I'll give you the context of what's going on here, and once you're up to speed, I'll share why I think it's so embarrassing. You might have heard that just yesterday the Bank of Canada raised its key interest rate another 0.25%, up to 4.75%, a very high number comparatively to the past number of years. Uh, now, this is all in an effort to fight against inflation. That is the Bank of Canada's biggest fear, that inflation will stay a lot, uh, around for the long term instead of sort of going back down to the 1-3% to range that they're comfortable with. But that battle against inflation isn't going as well as they'd hoped, right? They saw that it absolutely skyrocket here, and then they started raising rates saying, okay, we gotta get control of this. And that's when we started to see inflation come back down. But for the first time since those rate hikes actually started up showing their effect, we're seeing a little inflection here with inflation going up month over month. Now this makes the Bank of Canada pretty worried because they're thinking, hey, maybe we actually didn't raise interest rates enough to bring down inflation. They're largely thinking that raising interest rates will make Canadians feel a little bit less wealthy for a number of reasons. And as a result, they'll stop spending as much and with less demand, the same amount of supply, you'd have generally lowering prices or at the very least, the pace of inflation will slow down. Remember, that's the whole goal here in their eyes. And last week, we were also surprised by how well the Canadian economy is doing. At least when you look at GDP, we're seeing more growth than anyone expected. The Bank of Canada sees this and says, uh, our Canadian economy is growing too quickly. We don't expect this when we're raising interest rates as a, a way to try to slow things down. Seeing this says, hey, maybe people are going to keep on spending and inflation might not be done with us yet. Now, they were also concerned about the low unemployment rate because that's seen as an inflationary pressure because if there's less unemployment, then employers have to pay their employees higher wages to prevent them from getting a job elsewhere at a competitor or something like that. So they see that as a, a way that it'll increase Canadian spending um, with higher wages, um, resulting in more demand for goods and services, uh, ergo higher inflation. So all of these concerns combined led them to raising interest rates yet again to the highest level as we saw before in 22 years. Uh, and, but this is where they start to get a little bit more confused because today the the deputy governor of the Bank of Canada gave a speech and answered questions from reporters. Listen to this, then I'll break it down because uh, they're confused why what they've been doing hasn't been working as they expected. So we were first surprised on the upside from the kind of growth in the first quarters. But when we look in kind of the details, what we notice is what's the big driver there is consumption. Consumption came in at 5.8% growth. That's very high growth. And service is not surprising. You know, with the pandemic and things, services went down and we've kind of seen them kind of coming up. But we thought by now they'd be kind of slowly kind of easing off in terms of that kind of growth rate. The momentum in the economy is still uh, very strong and that's the aspect that we are kind of noticing there. So he says that they're surprised by the high consumption levels we're seeing in Canada, right? Canadians are still going out there and they're still buying things. Now, usually when we have higher or increasing interest rates, we get worse consumer confidence. There's potentially less jobs due to it being more expensive for businesses to expand or, or people are paying more on their loans, their mortgages, their debt, leading to less consumer spending. All of these things uh, caused by higher interest rates are supposed to make Canadians not want to go and spend. They need to save that money for a rainy day, but that's not happening this time. And the question is, why isn't that happening this time? It's so weird to them that they're not seeing this in the data. In the clip, he says this could be a number of different reasons. Um, it could be because people still have pent up demand from the pandemic, the services they couldn't get during the pandemic, uh, but I don't really buy that at this point, a year and a half after any major COVID related disruptions. Um, and it seems very obvious to me that they're leaving out one key point, uh, but we're going to get to that in just a moment. This aspect of having a very tight labor market and having the aspect that you know jobs are very abundant, so the, uh, the standard aspect of the interaction between having an interest rate increase and at the same time people being scared of losing their job, that usually kind of dampens down uh, consumption more. That might be one of the reasons, again, but we do think that this kind of very um, vigorous uh, labor market is a big part that's keeping that consumption up. 
As people know, there's just uh, jobs plenty out there. And it's a good thing to have those jobs, so that's something we actually like. It's just that it needs just to be a slowdown a bit to kind of help uh, the economy rebalance and get supply and demand uh, back into balance. To sum it up, he says that the things that have traditionally worked, like raising rates, making Canadians worry that they may lose their job as a result of the higher unemployment rates, um, well, those things aren't working. We're not seeing those play out. So does this mean that you, you need to be even more extreme with your rate hikes to see a result? Uh, he, uh, he, in this next clip, ties this actually to real estate. And this is where I think things get really interesting. The bank hiked eight times before going on pause. And before that happened, some bank officials said that consumers are indebted. They'll be extra sensitive to higher interest rates. Now it appears that the eight rate hikes didn't really put the brakes on the housing market and consumer spending in, in a durable way. What does that suggest now about the kind of tightening that might be required to bring balance back to the consumer side of the economy. We're really trying to figure out what is that uh, sensitivity of uh, the household and different, uh, in, on average, to these interest rate increases. And we know some of the aspects uh, of our rate increases affect households with a lag, and we take that into account. Obviously, the variable rate people that have at, at variable payments, that affects them right away, but there's a lot that have that more that lag. But you're exactly right, the, uh, this aspect of figuring out that households are a bit less sensitive to interest rates than we had thought is exactly part of the surprise. So he says another thing that they're surprised about is that the housing market hasn't reacted as heavily to these higher interest rates as they thought it might. Uh, typically, you have higher interest rates, people have to pay more to afford that mortgage, um, maybe people with variable rate mortgages um, can no longer afford to keep the house uh, because their payments have gone up so much, so they're forced to sell. But we didn't really see that, uh, uh, even though we've heard in the news a million times, like mortgage payments are going up for people, um, the 100% increase in someone's mortgage payment, uh, you, you might have seen headlines like this. And this is where I want to get into the key piece of information that I think has been embarrassingly left out of the way that the Bank of Canada is talking about this. Uh, and it is that I believe that the impact of higher rates on consumer confidence is being actively counteracted. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. I think you're going to find this interesting. If you follow the channel, you'll know that we've talked about this before. Canadian banks are extending amortizations over 35 years to avoid defaults. Essentially, this is talking about Canadians who have a big mortgage and when when their banks realize that, okay, maybe if we see these interest rates increasing, they won't be able to make these payments, we want to provide them with some relief. And the way that they've been providing that relief is by stretching out the amount of time they have to pay back the loan. This is the amortization. Like if you have a 20 year amortization, then you would, making your monthly payments pay off the home in 20 years. If you have a 30 year amortization, your payment would be lower on the same loan amount, but it would take you a longer time to pay off that mortgage, right? So that's what they're doing here. They're stretching out these amortization periods, making it so that even though these interest rates are so much higher, because they're paying the loan back more slowly, their month to month cash that they actually need to have to pay it off or to make their payment goes down, right? They're no longer under pressure. Now, traditionally, 25 years has been the maximum amortization for Canadian mortgages, or, or at least the, the most popular one, right? Um, but take a look at this. What's the secret to Canada's remarkably low delinquencies, despite these incredibly high rates? Well, it's never paying off those supersized mortgages, apparently, referring to the stretching of amortizations. Um, and they say that Canada's big six banks show a big share of mortgages had remaining amortizations of 30 years or longer in Q120. 2023, um, most of the big banks reported at least a quarter of their portfolio had at least a 30 years of, of payments remaining. And like I said, just last year, there was basically no 30 year mortgages. Most of them were around 25 years. The key thing to understand here is that extending amortizations takes the pressure off of mortgage holders. Even though you're not building as much equity in your home as you would have been with a smaller amortization, your monthly payments are still manageable because of this extension. So a lot of people who had these variable rate mortgages, their banks called them and said, hey, we recognize your rates going up. We want to offer you an amortization extension. Um, it'll make it so that your payment might even stay the same or go down. It'll take you longer, but your month to month problem of this crazy high mortgage rate increase, well, that short-term problem will be solved. 
And I think that this is one of the big missing pieces of information when it comes to the question about why are consumers still feeling so confident? Why are people spending and why is this having an impact on inflation? Why haven't we seen a major uh, decrease in real estate prices? It's because people aren't feeling the pressure of these interest rate hikes as they should because the amortization pressure release valve was uh, unscrewed and, and those people who should be pressured by these interest rates increasing aren't feeling the pressure. I mean, the whole whole point of increasing rates is to tamp down on consumer confidence, tamp down or lower consumer spending, make people feel uneasy about the future so they feel less wealthy, spend less, and bring down inflation. But as we've seen, that's just not happening yet. And this is also one of the reasons we haven't seen real estate prices go down as much as many people expected. Well, the people who were going to list their homes or were going to need to list their homes because they can no longer afford the mortgage payments, well, they're simply not listing now. This is leading to a low in supply in the housing market. And as a result, we have the same amount of demand and a lower supply, lower inventory. And, and that provides like an artificial floor underneath the real estate prices because people who would need to sell just aren't being forced to anymore. Now, the fault in making this decision to allow these amortization extensions, well, it lays somewhere between the big bank regulator, OSFI, the Office for the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, um, as well as mortgage insurers, but also the federal government to a certain extent for providing this relief. I mean, in the most recent budget, which I have up here on the screen, they even outline how they want to make life easier for the people who bought at the top and are seeing higher mortgage payments as a result of the Bank of Canada's increased interest rates. It's called a code of conduct to protect Canadians with existing mortgages. Right inside of the 2023 budget, um, through a number of different measures, they're trying to sort of formalize the ability to uh, extend these amortizations out past 25 years. They say this guideline will ensure that Canadians are treated fairly and have equitable access to relief, uh, which will help more Canadians afford the impact of elevated interest rates. Uh, but you might be saying the whole point of raising interest rates is to make people feel the impact of that to fight against inflation, right? So it feels like there's one force, the Bank of Canada saying, we wanna make people feel poor so that they stop spending so that we can control inflation. And we have the federal government saying, we don't want people to feel bad. We wanna prop up our GDP numbers. We wanna make sure that these people with mortgages aren't feeling the pressure. We wanna be good to them, they might be saying. <laughs> The main point being that the Bank of Canada is trying to inflict pain via their higher rates, but that very pain is being diluted by these new amortization or mortgage relief policies, right? Um, so these policies are good for the individuals that are struggling to pay them, right? But they're not great for achieving the goal of lower consumer confidence and low inflation, the very goal that the Bank of Canada has been chaf chasing, not chafing, <laughs> as their main goal, right? It feels like quite a mess, and it, but it also feels kind of obvious that Canadians might not be feeling the pain of interest rates because of these actions that are being taken, taken to prevent them from feeling that pain. And it's rather embarrassing that the Bank of Canada is not talking about this as a potential reason why their interest rate policy decisions are having a far diminished impact on uh, inflation and all the things that they would traditionally expect to happen is because people are sort of pushing back the other way against it, OSFI, as well as uh, the mortgage insurers, and uh, to a certain extent, the federal government. It's obviously a big mess. I'm curious what you think about it. Uh, leave me a comment down in the description. Let me know what you think of this whole situation. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. About 50% of the people who watch these videos aren't subscribed and it's a one click and it's free and it helps me out tremendously. So thank you for doing that. But with all that said, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, I really hoped it helped you out at least a little bit. And I'll See you next time.